Welcome in to Steelers Talk Yinzers. My name is Jack Sperry, and on today's show, we're going to be discussing the head coach. That's right, Coach T, Mike Tomlin. As a community, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Mike Tomlin, and then I'm going to be addressing your concerns, your questions at the end of today's show. So buckle in, it's going to be a great show. But first, let me know in the comments section, what is your confidence level in the head coach, Mike Tomlin, here in Pittsburgh? Put it on a scale of 1 to 10 for me down in the comments section. Can't wait to see how you're feeling about the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. All right, now let's dive into uh, today's show. I cannot wait to talk about Mike Tomlin. And, you know, later on into the show, I'm going to be giving you guys uh, the opportunity to put in questions. I'm going to answer them. For those of you that are watching this, and it's not Wednesday, we filmed this during the Steelers Talk Live show, so you can't get your questions in now. Just so you guys know, but I really do appreciate all the support. So now, my take on Mike Tomlin. Now, I think that Mike Tomlin is a top five head coach in the National Football League. Uh, and the reasoning for that is that he is one of the best leaders of men that have ever coached in the National Football League. The, the charisma, the ability to control the respect of the players in the locker room is second to none. And he's also a great defensive mind, and he, con he consistently performs and performs and gets this team in position to get to the playoffs and have success there. So I really am excited about Mike Tomlin's future here in Pittsburgh. Of course, 16 straight seasons without a losing record, but there are some legit criticisms that do need to be at least put into the equation here. I'm not saying that Mike Tomlin is a perfect head coach by any means, and there are some legitimate gripes. Those gripes include he needs to get the offensive coordinator right. Okay, he's whiffed on a couple of offensive coordinators, and right now Matt Canada is starting to look like another whiff for Mike Tomlin in his offensive coordinator picks. And, be, you know, just overall, as a defensive guy, he does lack a little bit of offensive vision, right? He hasn't brought in anybody that's really an innovative mind since Bruce Arians, and that was his, and that was way back when, man. And I just, I just think that he needs to get somebody in the room that, that can really uh, modernize this offense, and I'm not sure Matt Canada is going to be that guy. And then, you know, part of that problem as well of not being able to hire the right offensive coordinator is he just doesn't have the same connections as somebody that's been like an assistant coach going from staff to staff, meeting new people, right? Tomlin's been here for the last 16 years. He's been around his guys. It's the same thing with Bill Belichick, right? If you're in one spot for so long and you're around the same people and you're not meeting new people at, at different spots at different locations, it, you're just not getting better, right? So he doesn't have those connections in the league to be like, hey, a uh, new, young, you know, exciting offensive coordinator. Come, uh, come to the Steelers, right? Come to the Steelers because we have that connection. He just doesn't have those connections, and that and that's part of the problem here with Mike Tomlin. So, but here's the thing: Mike Tomlin's do not grow on trees. Now, what do I mean by that? He's an elite defensive mind. You know, he's, he he learned uh, the Tampa two defense when he started out in the league with the 2002 uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, he's been a Tampa two guy his entire career, but he's more than a Tampa two guy. He's really an aggressive Tampa two kind of guy. Lots of cover one, lots of cover three, and then in those third down situations, he loves to go to that uh, a Tampa two cover two defense. And you know, there's just not many coaches like Mike Tomlin that can command the respect of NFL players the way that Tomlin does, get the most out of his guys the way that Mike Tomlin does. And the proof is in the pudding, okay? Right now, Mike Tomlin is sixth in the National Football League in career winning percentage. And you might notice that Kevin O'Connell is a first-year head coach. So it's like, okay, that's, that's, that's definitely not fair there. And then Nick Sirianni, you know, he's at 65.7. He's only a second-year head coach. So, and then Matt LaFleur with the Green Bay Packers, he inherited an MVP Aaron Rodgers. Okay, so if you take a look at that list, and, and the guys that have done it for over a decade, Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, and Mike Tomlin. Those three guys are in a category by themselves when it comes to longevity in terms of having a winning culture and maintaining that through multiple uh, players and personnel and all these different things. Now, right now, a lot of these coaches that are listed right here, a lot of Steelers fans think are better than Mike Tomlin, but he has a higher winning percentage than all of them, better than McVay. Better than Shanahan. Those two are the offensive, quote-unquote, geniuses that are running this new revolution on offense right now. Mike Tomlin is a higher career winning percentage than those guys after 16 seasons and going through multiple levels of personnel. Same thing with John Harbaugh, right? 60.3%. Pete Carroll, 58.3%. Okay, so Mike Tomlin, 
the, the success and the sustainability of that success is something you just don't see from average or below average head coaches. It's just not. Now, next up, uh, I'm going to be addressing some another a legitimate gripe that people have, which is the playoff record with Mike Tomlin. But first, go ahead and go to the Chat Sports website and get your hands on this awesome Pittsburgh Steelers t-shirt combo. Perfect for summer. You got the short sleeve there with the black and the helmet on there. And then for the summer here, we got a long sleeve white t-shirt. You know, you definitely don't want a black long sleeve because it definitely, you know, the heat gets in there. It gets all sweaty. It gets all gross. Not good at all. A white one is a lot better if you like wearing long sleeves like I do. So if this is the perfect combo for you, we got it available for you on the Chat Sports website. Go to chatsports.com slash Steelers combo to get your hands on this t-shirt combo today. So now I want to address Tomlin's playoff record because this is usually what people bring up. He's really great in the, in the regular season. He consistently gets them to the playoffs, but then once he gets there, he chokes. And that is just a complete bunch of hogwash, man. Okay, eight and nine record, 47% win percentage in the playoffs. Okay, that's the only thing about Mike Tomlin's record that's below 500. Okay, plain and simply. And then he's also got three AFC championship appearances and two Super Bowl appearances. So it's not like he completely chokes all the time, right? He's proven that he has the leadership ability, the coaching ability to get his teams deep into the playoffs. Now, is this the kind of uh, sustainable, like, like constantly going to the AFC championship like the Steelers fans are kind of used to throughout their history with Chuck Knoll and Bill Cowher? No, it's not. But Mike Tomlin, man, he is somebody that consistently gets his teams in positions to get themselves to the Super Bowl and win it. And that is the job of a head coach. The, head, the job of the head coach is not necessarily to win the game for the players, right? It's up to the players. It's up to the coach to give the players the proper foundation to give themselves a shot at a title. And then once you get there, you know, there's a bunch of different variables in the do or die system of the NFL playoffs, right? There's injuries, there's luck. There's all these different things that come into play. And just like that, your season can be over. And unfortunately for Mike Tomlin and the Steelers, especially during the Killer Bees era, uh, that just consistently happened. And that just ended with Mike Tomlin never winning another Super Bowl after his second season as head coach, of course, with Big Ben Roethlisberger against the Cardinals in that, in that classic Super Bowl at the San, San, uh, the San Antonio Holmes catch. Uh, so I really do think that Mike Tomlin is somebody that excels in many areas. Number one, commanding the locker room. He is number one in the National Football League at getting the most out of his players in terms of buying into the program. Then he's also fantastic at teaching defensive technique. Look at all the players that he has developed throughout his career. T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick. Right, Fitzpatrick was kind of a dud in Miami. He comes to Pittsburgh, completely changes his career trajectory, in large part to the guidance of Mike Tomlin on the defensive side of the ball. He is an elite defensive mind, and you know he definitely gets the most out of his roster year in and year out. We saw that in the waning years of Big Ben Roethlisberger's career, when he could barely throw it 20 yards down the field by season's end, because his body was deteriorating, and that was like for three or four seasons there towards the end of his career. And Mike Tomlin still got this team in position to win and get to the playoffs and get to at least 500, right? That is absolutely incredible. Time and time again to never have a losing season. It's just simply incredible. And he's one of the best leaders of men and getting the guys in the locker room to buy in than anybody that has ever coached in the National Football League. So now I am going to take your questions and concerns regarding Mike Tomlin now that you know how I feel about it. But before we get into that, let me know in the comments section. Will Tomlin lead the Pittsburgh Steelers back to the playoffs in 2023? Give me a yes or give me a no. Let me know how you're feeling about the Steelers here in 2023. All right, now let's take some questions here. First one comes from Dominic Schrader, who says, Colin Coward always says defensive head coaches are the reasons teams don't succeed and offensive, offensive coordinators are, are head coaches, I think is what he's trying to say there, are why other teams do. Is Tomlin this team's uh, poison. No, I don't think so, Dominic. Uh, you know, you look at defensive head coaches, there's been a ton of defensive head coaches throughout the history of the NFL that have definitely shown that they can win championships. Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, you know, Mike Tomlin, you know, there's a lot of guys in this league that have shown that they can win Super Bowls, right? And, you know, I think that offensive head coaches do have an advantage because defensive head coaches, if they get a really good offensive play caller, that guy is leaving to be a head coach elsewhere. 
All right, and one of the reasons why Bill Belichick has been so successful is because Josh McDaniels, he got his first job. He was fired quickly. He could come back, and he spent a ton of years as Tom Brady's offensive coordinator, and nobody wanted to hire him. And then even when the Colts wanted to, wanted to hire him that year, he said no thanks, and he stayed with the Patriots until he got the right opportunity. So Bill Belichick really lucked out in the offensive coordinator department. Mike Tomlin has made some really bad picks at offensive coordinator, which is one of the reasons why the Steelers haven't been able to get that second ring for him throughout these 16 years. But I think Tomlin, when it comes to the, what's important in a head coach, right, building culture, getting guys to buy in, getting the most out of his players. Nobody does that better in the National Football League than Mike Tomlin. Now we got a question from Chris Mannerful here. He says, do you think he can be the best coach in the NFL in the next two years? So he's definitely in the top three right now, in my opinion, when it comes to being a true head coach. I'm not talking about schematically or anything like that right now. I'm talking about true leaders of programs. I think right now the numbers show that Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, and Mike Tomlin are in a league of their own. And, you know, I think that Mike Tomlin is, you know, just right up there with Bill Belichick and Andy Reid in terms of his acumen on his side of the football. Now, I would give Belichick the the edge when it comes to schematics on the defensive side of the ball. Same thing with Andy Reid. I think Reid is a little bit uh, more advanced on the offensive side of the ball than, the, than Tomlin is on defense. But overall, man, Tomlin, I think is probably, you could definitely make an argument. He's a top three head coach in the league right now. Next question comes from Joel Bradley, who asks, what do you think is the biggest mistake of Tomlin's career? Right now, it's, it's hiring Matt Canada. Right now, I would say that's probably his biggest mistake. Uh, and Matt Canada is somebody that's, if he has a stinker of a year this year, when expectations are so high for this team heading into the year, and, Matt, and, and Kenny Pickett stinks, and the run game can't get going, and you know the defense is great, but the offense just continuously holds this team down, that will be such a disappointment. And when it's all said and done, that could be the biggest mistake of Tomlin's career. Then we get to Matt Hyde here. He says, do you think that the defense can get more than 70 sacks this year? 70 is a big number, but I wouldn't put it past this defense, man. Cam Hayward is an absolute beast when it comes to rushing the passer on the interior. He doesn't get mentioned enough with the Chris Joneses and the Aaron Donalds, man. Cam Hayward is absolutely a fantastic football player, and because he's in Pittsburgh, he gets, he gets kind of crapped on a little bit, which is a shame. And, you know, last year the Eagles had 70, so they led the NFL, and it's going to be tough to get to that number, but when he got Highsmith, he got Watt. You've got Keanu Benson who can get after quarterbacks too. And you got Cam Award, Larry Ogunjobi as well. This is a stacked pass rush, man. I, I, I'm not going to put it past this team to put up 70. Then we got Mr. Berg, or Mr. Bra here. <laughs> nice name. It says, it's not his fault. The Steelers started two and six. It's Canada's fault. Now, it's everybody's fault. You know, Mike Tomlin would be the last person that wants to hear that from somebody. He's going to say, I'm going to take responsibility for my team. And that's one of the reasons why I love him. He's so accountable to everything, including his playoff record, by the way. But, you know, I think that the Canada did play a big role, no question about it. But, you know, if, can if it's Canada's fault, you have to ask yourself the question, who put him there? And I think that's the best argument against Mike Tomlin is that he doesn't have a great offensive vision. He doesn't really know how to identify offensive talent and what's the, where the league is trending towards. I think that's probably his biggest, uh, the biggest knock on him right now. And unless he gets that offensive coordinator spot fixed, whether it be Matt Canada or somebody else, Tomlin is not going to win another Super Bowl point blank. Then we got a question here from Nothing who says, if Tomlin wins a playoff game this year, will people finally stop saying he's a bad coach? I hope so. He's a great coach, man. He's always putting this team in positions to win. He, you know, the, the Steelers fans, let's just, let's just say this. They don't really know what it's like to have like a terrible football team, like a four win team. Right? It's been a very long time since the Pittsburgh Steelers have been that bad. And, you know, Steelers fans look at an 8-8 eight and eight season or a 9-8 and eight season, and they're like, that's a terrible season. And it's like, yes, according to the standards of the Steelers, but when you look at the league average, right, so many teams spend, like, decades trying to just get to 9-8, and 10-7. and seven. Now, I understand the goal is to win championships, and absolutely, that should be the goal. And Mike Tomlin will be the first one to tell you he needs to get another one and fast. But, man... I tell you, there's just not many coaches in the league that can, that can maintain a level of success throughout the course of time, especially in the AFC with all the talent that he's had to deal with. So I, I appreciate all the questions, guys. This has been a lot of fun for me. I hope you guys had fun as well. Make sure you click that subscribe button. 
for more community discussions just like this one. Of course, we have Steelers Talk Live shows every single Wednesday. So if you want an interactive Steelers experience here on YouTube, 100% free, go ahead and click that subscribe button for me right now.